So uh, uh, let's look at uh, this classic problem. You have uh, two random variables uh, whose joint density function is given. Uh, so this is actually given to us. And uh, the problem is <coughs> find the density function of uh, the sum of two random variables. So, so z equal to x plus y. Uh, we want the density function of uh, uh, z. Uh, so uh, to, uh, to start with, you will see that it's easiest to generally, it's more physical to start with the distribution function of z. And so the distribution function is by definition z less than or equal to small z. But capital Z is given to be x plus y. This is where we start. So x plus y less than or equal to z. So of course, at this point, uh, we have translated the problem to x and y in terms of x and y. Uh, so we could uh, draw this region where this inequality is satisfied. Uh, so x plus y is a line, right? x plus y equal to z is this line. So we are interested in the probability of the joint distribution function, which is here, evaluated over this region. So the easiest way is you take a strip. And uh, so here I have decided to take a strip of x. x goes from minus infinity to this point, And uh, y goes from, min in general, minus infinity to plus infinity. So this is double integral <coughs> fxy x comma y. So first I'm going to integrate on x and then I'll integrate out on y. Or you could have taken a vertical strip. So notice the on the x the limits are from here and x goes up to z minus y. So x goes from in general minus infinity to z minus y and y goes from minus infinity to plus infinity. Then, of course, the next uh, job is simply take the derivative of the z. Uh, so the derivative is d by dz of fzz. Of course, this is a bit complicated because z is also appears in the limits. Uh, so we will use uh, Leibniz rule here. I'll write it down here for uh, so this is quite useful. If you have a function uh, so notice that I purposely put uh, a, a, it's a function of x in on the limits as well as the integrand. So what we are interested in is taking the derivative of h with respect to x. So the rule is <coughs> you can derive this just using elementary calculus take x plus delta x and manipulate it. So you roll it, but it will turn out to be that take the derivative of the top limit, which is uh, db by dx, <coughs> and substitute in the function uh, where the variable is. So here the variable is uh, y is the variable. So the limits goes in here. So this is going to be g of x comma bx. Uh, do the same thing on the denominator, but with a negative sign. So this will be d by dx of uh, ax, and substitute the uh, limit, which is x, at this place, which will be ax now. And there is a third term, which would be the limits are stay as they are, <coughs> and the inside as usual. The inside uh, integrand is. Uh, you take the derivative with respect to x. So in our case, of course, the top limit is, uh, of course, if the, any one of the limits is 0, there is no contribution. So if you apply that here, so I'll write down here, write it down here. Uh, so notice that uh, the first, uh, the, the derivative comes through the first uh, integral because these are constants. You need to take the, so this, of course, reduces to minus infinity to plus infinity, you need to take the derivative with respect to x of this integral, which is minus infinity to z minus y fxy x comma y dx dy. Uh, so here applying this rule, you have the derivative of the top limit, which would be 1. Then, of course, the in this case, the <coughs> 
the variable is x so this will be 1 multiplied by fxy z minus y comma y minus the derivative of the bottom limit which is 0 here because it's a constant and the third term is let me stay as it is the derivative of the integrand with respect to z again notice so that's also 0 uh, because you are taking the derivative with respect to z so this goes to 0 so essentially there is <coughs> only one term but notice that there was the other integral is there in other words this is this part so then you have the integration on y so the whole thing multiplied by dy so i would so this turns out to be minus infinity to plus infinity fx y z minus y comma y dy is the answer for fzc now uh, if x and y are, uh, so this is in general, suppose now uh, x and y are independent. Uh, then uh, we have the side relation, the joint density function is of course the product of the density functions. fxx multiplied by fyy. So if I substitute that, in this case this would become fx of z minus y uh, multiplied by f y y d y now this is the classic convolution relation so we could write this as the convolution of f x at uh, z convolved with uh, f y at uh, z so we have a uh, uh, we have a <coughs> theorem theorem says that uh, if, if x and y are independent and then the density function of the sum is the convolution of their respective density functions. So remember this convolution only is true uh, if the x and y are independent. So let me write that a little more uh, <coughs> clearly. Then f z z is uh, the uh, f x of uh, z convolved with uh, f y of z. So of course, you sh for this to make sense, you should know how to do the convolution. So that's the classic uh, result. Let me do a, a special case of this. Uh, so the rest are details, but I will do a special case where the uh, random variables are non-negative. Uh, so quickly, so that will be the case, suppose x and y are exponential or things like that. So it's still the same problem. <coughs> and uh, the, uh, so it will be, uh, let's say x, y are non-negative. So you, the joint density function is and non-negative only over this region. Only over this region it is non-negative. Nevertheless, FCC is of course, uh, so the same thing, C is less than or equal to Z. Z is given to be X plus Y less than or equal to Z. So that's this line. This is the line X plus Y equal to Z. Uh, so X plus Y less than or equal to Z is only this region. Because the density function is zero here. So we basically need to integrate here. So once again, it is uh, y goes from 0 to here. This will be z. This is the point 0, comma z. So y goes from 0 to z. And x goes from 0 to z minus y. x goes from 0 to z minus y. <coughs> fxy, x, comma, y, dx, dy. So when you do the de derivative, you have to do this twice because there's a, a, a derivative of the top limit that's one. Then when we substitute, so remember this is with respect to y. So when you, instead of y, when you substitute z, this integral will become zero to zero. So there is actually no contribution. Derivative of the bottom limit, zero, so there's no contribution. 
So there is only contribution from the third term. So this will be d by dz of this integral, 0 to z minus y, fx y, x comma y, <coughs> dx dy. So we do this again one more time. The derivative of the top limit is 1. Substitute the variable into the variable. So this will become fx, so this will become 0 to z, fx y, z minus y comma y. Derivative of the bottom limit, 0, no contribution. Derivative of this term with respect to z, last term, no contribution. So basically this is the answer. Except that, so remember in the general case we had <laughs> fzz to be minus infinity to plus infinity fxy z minus y comma y dy. But if xy, <laughs> if fxy is 0, if, if x is less than 0 or y is less than 0, uh, then in other words if it is non-negative, fzz will turn out to be what we have here. So FCC, this formula reduces to 0 to, not infinity, 0 to z, fx y, z minus y comma y dy. Of course, if x and y are independent, this would be fx of uh, z minus y and f y of uh, y dy. So this is the same as this if x and y are independent. Uh, so to sum it up, as an example, suppose x is uh, exponential with parameter lambda, y is exponential with the parameter also lambda, and x and y are independent. Uh, then it's, uh, we can apply to this case. So if z, z is of course x plus y, and you have f z z would be integral zero to z. This is one over lambda e raised to minus uh, uh, z minus y divided by lambda. That's the density function of x evaluated at z minus y multiplied by 1 over lambda e raised to minus y o. This is the density function of y. So when you multiply and integrate, y, y over lambda cancels. And this, I'm sorry, this is 0 to z. And e raised to minus z goes outside. So you have 1 over lambda squared z e raised to minus z. And of course, if x and y are positive, the uh, z is also positive. So this is um, uh, the gamma, so which is true. If x and y are exponential, uh, uh, the sum is uh, gamma with uh, parameter 2.